Britain's green and pleasant land is under siege. But does Britain have enough suitable land for a new wave of mass building? The pressure for expansion is so intense that major developments are being planned on floodplains, despite the Environment Agency warning that they will put life and property at risk. And when flooding happens, the consequences can be dire. This is my nice new kitchen floor, but it's uh, about an inch and a half deep in water. Dukesbury, Gloucestershire. In July 2007, it suffered some of the worst flooding Britain's ever seen. I was convinced that it wouldn't come in because living in Tewkesbury most of my uh, adult life, I'd never seen the water anywhere near this level here. But he was wrong. Exceptional rainfall caused exceptional flooding. This is Knight's Way three months after those dramatic scenes. There's a caravan outside every single house. These are temporary homes, somewhere to live while extensive repairs put right thousands of pounds worth of damage caused by the floods. The best way to describe it, it was surreal. Um, we've never seen anything like it. All of a sudden, these houses were mini islands. You know, dirty brown water. Each individual house was like a, a little island all of its own. Right, OK, if I now show you the damage, what's got to happen now is the one metre above floor level, so that's about there, all this plaster has to come off, all the way around the room, all around the back, all, all through this ground floor has to come off, and then these, uh, the floorboards come up, and then the joists. And once all that's done, um, we, uh, we then get new joists, uh, new floorboards, new plaster, new skirting boards, new doors, etc., etc. This is where we're living now, my wife and I and uh, my Airedale Terrier. And uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's not exactly what you call spacious, but at least it's, uh, at least it's comfortable. Right? Once work starts on the house, we could be in here for two to three months, maybe even longer, we don't know. The Environment Agency believes some building on floodplains can be acceptable, but only if the risk is properly assessed. Historically, if you look at where our existing settlements are, they're usually around rivers and watercourses and bridges and fords and things like that. So there is tremendous pressure for development. As an agency, what we want to see is um, no inappropriate development in the floodplain. Tewkesbury locals are convinced no such calculation of risk was made where they live. They believe a neighbouring estate was built on a floodplain, and that contributed to this disaster by building over land where the water would have stayed. In the distance, you see the first houses of the Walton Carr's development, those, those three uh, detached houses. In the middle of that is that Hawthorn hedge. The maximum height of the water was just below the top of that. You can imagine the trillions of gallons of water. Right, those houses over there are built on, uh, on floodplain. And, and on made-up ground. So the water that would have gone there, had that development not been there, would have meant a lot lower level. The houses where I live have never flooded before, so therefore those houses had to have been a, a contribution towards it. The council denies the estate is on a floodplain because the ground it was built on is slightly higher than its surroundings. Ironically, this part of Knight's Way is on the edge of the floodplain. It was built long before the risks were fully understood. As a result of, the, of, of what we know now in terms of climate change, we adopt an even more, even stronger position in terms of um, a precautionary approach when considering development proposals in flood risk areas.